welcome welcome let's get back into the word shalom all right let's go to saint matthew chapter 13 beginning at verse 1 all the way down to verse 58 yeah right yeah saint matthew chapter 1 you got your bibles all right let's begin verse 1 the same day went jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside okay let's always put it in context so you have understanding of who's who so we're talking about jesus who is jesus jesus is a hebrew israelite he's of the seed of abraham he's of the tribe of judah uh, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. Jacob is the son of Isaac. Isaac is the son of Abraham. The Lord made a covenant with Abraham that his seed would be blessed and that he would give his seed some land that he promised for a covenant. And so Abraham believed God and God accounted that to him as righteousness. So Jesus is of that seed of Abraham. He's of the tribe of Judah. Jacob had 12 sons, which became the 12 tribes of Judah. And Jesus is of the tribe of Judah. So when you hear Jews in the scriptures, particularly in the New Testament, Jews is referring to the tribe of Judah, not all of Israel. Jews is a part of Israel, but Jews is only one tribe of Israel. So you have to put it in context because people think when you say Jews, you're talking about all of Israel. Jews is only one tribe or the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin. So we're talking about Jesus. It says the same day when Jesus out of the house and sat by the seaside. Verse 2 and great multitudes were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore so jesus was getting ready to minister to the people to the great multitudes now who are the multitudes the multitudes are hebrew israelites of the seed of abraham of the tribe of judah these are the people that jesus was, re, was ministering to the southern kingdom of, uh, of judah and benjamin so jesus was a uh, of the tribe of judah he was a hebrew israelite and the people that he was ministering to was of the tribe of judah and they were hebrew israelites okay this is what you have to understand when you read the scriptures to keep them in context. So this was the multitude. They were gathered together unto him so that he went into a ship and sat and the whole multitude stood on the shore. So Jesus didn't have a big old fancy building. He just sat down on the ship and sat down. And the multitude was standing on the shore. They wanted to hear the word of God. Verse 3. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. So every time that Jesus spoke to the multitude, not every time, most of the time, he spoke in parables so that only those that really wanted to know would really seek to figure out, okay, what is this all about? Because a lot of people just want to see miracles and stuff like that. <laughs> and the scribes and the Pharisees just wanted to catch Jesus in his words. So Jesus just spoke to them in parables. It also had to do with a prophecy that went forth that hearing they would not understand. So he spoke to them in parables. So he said a sower went forth to sow. A sower is someone who's like a gardener they go in they putting plants putting seeds in the soil so the the sower went forth to sow verse four and when he sowed some seeds fell by the wayside 
and the fowls came and devoured them up. So he said, this the sower, he sowed some of his seeds by the wayside, and the fowls came and, and, and devoured them up. Verse, verse 5. Some fell on stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of the earth. So he sowed again in stony places. The earth wasn't cultivated enough, had not much earth. Forthwith they sprang up because they had no deepness of the earth. Verse 6, and when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root. They withered away. <laughs> so the sower is sowing all these seeds. Verse 7. And some fell among thorns, and the thorn, thorns sprung up and choked them. So when the, he sowed the seed among the thorns, the thorns choked the seed. <laughs> they were too much for the seed to produce fruit. The, the, the thorns choked them. This, uh, the seed that was sown among the thorns, the, the, the seed that fell among the thorns was choked. Verse 8, but others fell into good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. So the sower went forth to sow. He sowed seeds that fell uh, by the wayside, seeds that fell in stony places, and seeds that fell among thorns, and then some seed fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. And then he said in verse 9, who hath the ear, who had ears to hear, let him hear. So Jesus was making a point and said, okay, pay attention, listen to what I'm saying. If you have ears to hear, let him hear. Because <laughs> what Jesus was saying, he was saying, let these words that I'm saying fall into your heart. Let your heart be good ground so that the seed can take root in your heart and bring forth fruit. So that's when you're taking heed. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Verse 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? So the disciples are the people that actually believed and followed his teaching and obeyed what he was saying. They were Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. But the whole multitude that was listening, some of them were just coming probably to listen for the first time and never really heard him. So they wouldn't have been considered disciples, but he was speaking unto them, hoping hoping that they'll believe and become disciples. So the disciples asked him, why, why do you speak to them in parables? Verse 11, he answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. So Jesus said that to his disciples, you need to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it's not given. So what did Jesus say? He said, the kingdom of heaven is a mystery. And it's still a mystery to this day. Because most people don't know what the kingdom of heaven is for. Even though Jesus just told you. He said it is given unto you. Unto who? Who is he talking about? Who is the who? The who is his disciples. And who is the disciples? Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. It's given unto them to know the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. So what is the mystery of the kingdom of heaven? It's for Israel. <laughs> but people want to go around telling you that the kingdom of heaven is for everybody in the whole wide world. <laughs> That's why it's a mystery because they don't know. But to them it's not given so they don't know. And believe me, I didn't know for a long time. 
But the scripture says, if you seek, you'll find. If you knock, the door will be open. If you ask, it shall be given. Verse 12. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. <clears throat> so the Lord is telling you, the kingdom of heaven is for Israel, if you believe it. Whosoever, who's the whosoever? The whosoever is Israel, all of Israel, but specifically the tribe of Judah. Or, or the, he said, for whosoever hath to him shall be given. And he shall have more in abundance. <laughs> but whosoever has not for him shall be taken away, even that he had. So even though the kingdom of heaven is for Israel and specifically Judah, they don't believe, then they don't receive. So even what they have is going to be taken away from them. So they're not going to get the kingdom of heaven because they don't accept it. They don't believe it. Verse 13, therefore, speak out to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. Same way it is right now, today. <laughs> I'm, as I'm sharing the scriptures with you, I'm telling you, the Hebrew, that the kingdom of heaven is for Israel, Hebrew Israelites. <laughs> That's who it's for. If they believe, they'll receive it. But if they don't, they're not going to, it's not for them. <laughs> what It's supposed to be for them, but it's going to be taken away because they don't believe it. <laughs> and it just goes back to what Jesus just said. Therefore, speak out to them in perils because they seeing, see not, hearing, and hear not. Neither do they understand. We've been told, and I'm 55 years old, and it's more than since my years, that Jesus is coming back for everybody. That's what we've been told. That's what we've been led to believe. That's because we haven't searched the scriptures to find out for ourselves. We just take what somebody told us. But if you go back and re-examine the scriptures, research, search, research, search, research, search, research, research the scriptures, Go back and research the scriptures. You get the point? You'll find that the kingdom of heaven is for Israel. Research the scriptures. Verse 14. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. So this prophecy came to pass while Jesus was ministering. You got to understand all scriptures is about the prophets, Moses and the prophets. Everything that is written must come to pass. Everything will pass away, but Jesus said, my word will never pass away. The word of God is not going to pass away. Everything else will pass away, but the word of God is not going to pass away. The truth is being revealed. The truth is coming out. It won't be hid. All these prophecies that have been fulfilled, there are some other prophecies that has yet to be fulfilled, and it's going to happen. But if you're not seeking and studying and searching the scriptures, it'll happen and you won't even know it. <laughs> That's why you got to seek and study the scriptures. So by hearing you shall hear and not and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see and not, not perceive. So don't just take my word for it. Go back and search the scriptures to see if what I'm saying is true. Verse 15. For this people heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes or have closed, least at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. So Jesus is talking about Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham and of the tribe of Judah. And so 
they're listening to what he's saying, but he said that the heart is wax gross and their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes have they closed. He didn't close them. They closed them themselves. They, I don't see. I don't hear. I don't know what you're talking about. Lee said anytime they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Jesus wanted to heal them. But if they don't understand, if they don't believe, they can't be healed. Same way with you today. If you're listening to what I'm sharing with you, either you believe it or you don't. If you believe it, go back and research to make sure I'm saying it's true. If you don't believe it, go back and research it and see if what I'm saying is true. Don't just say, I don't believe it, and then just turn it off. Well, you can do that if you want to. <laughs> But I challenge you to go back and research the scriptures to see what I'm saying, if and what I'm saying is true. Because it's for your own benefit. It's not for my benefit. If I'm wrong, I happily repent and say I was wrong. Show me where I'm wrong. So uh, Jesus said, I want to heal them. I, <laughs> I want them to be converted, but they, they, they won't believe. They don't believe because their heart is wax gross. Verse 16, but blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. So the, the disciples that hear, that see, that believe, he said that you're blessed because you're believing the word of God. And that's the thing. To serve the Lord means to serve, to know his word, to believe his word. That's what it serving the Lord is. You got to believe the word. You got to know the word and you got to believe it. And if you love the Lord, that means you have to love his word because he is his word. If you go around saying, I love the Lord and God is first in my life, but you don't know his word, then really you're just lying. You're just speaking out of the side of your mouth <laughs> because God is his word. So a lot of people are ignorant. They go around saying they believe in God, but they don't know God's word. So you can't know God outside of his word. He's God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But he is his word, and his word is him. So his word is spirit in their life. <laughs> so you got to know the word. You got to believe the word, and you got to do what the word of God says to do. So you got to study the scriptures. Verse 17, but verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. Many prophets and righteous men desire to see the day that Jesus would come into being. They believed it. They read it in the scriptures. They even prophesied about it. But they didn't live long enough to see it. They desired to see it, but they didn't see it. Verse 18. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. So now Jesus is beginning to explain to his disciples, those that follow him, believe what he's saying, believe the word of God. They are Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah. Those are his disciples. Verse 19. When anyone hear the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catch away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So Jesus is talking about the kingdom of heaven. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven to Israel specifically to the tribe of Judah, because the kingdom of heaven is for Israel. The kingdom of heaven is for Judah. Jesus is the king of the Jews who are Judah. Jesus is the king of Israel. But you got to understand, and I explained this to you before. That's why you got to go back and research the scriptures. Israel is a 12-member nation. However, David was king, and the whole kingdom of Israel was together, combined in one 
one, one Israel, one kingdom. But Solomon, David's son, sinned. And the Lord said, I'm going to divide the kingdom. And I'm a ten, ten of the tribe going to go to your neighbor. And then you're going to keep two of the tribes because of my servant David's sake. So David held on because of David. Solomon held on to two of the tribes, which was Judah and Benjamin. But the other ten tribes uh, were referred to as Ephraim or sometimes as Israel. But they end up sinning, and the, the Lord scattered them among the Gentiles. And during this time, the ten tribes, the, the northern kingdom is scattered. So Jesus is refer is is only ministering right now to is to uh Israel, but the tribe of Judah and Benjamin, the southern kingdom. They're still Israel, but they're the southern kingdom. So the kingdom is divided into two. But when Jesus returned back to earth, he's going to reunite the king, uh, the two tribe, the two kingdoms back into one kingdom. So right now. Jesus is telling them about the kingdom. That's why the kingdom is for Israel. He said, when anyone hear the word of the kingdom, the, the kingdom is for Israel. I'll refer you to a scripture in, in, in Acts when the, the uh, disciples, the apostles said, well, are you going to at this time return the kingdom to Israel? <laughs> so uh, restore the kingdom to Israel. The kingdom, the kingdom of heaven belongs to Israel. Search the scriptures. Re-search the scriptures. Go back and research the scriptures. Search it and search it and search it. Because it's in there. When one hears the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then come the wicked one and cast away that which was sown in his heart. So you may be hearing this for the first time. So you need to take heed to what you're hearing. A lot of people been in what we call church a long time, like me. They old as me or younger than me, but they've been in church a long time. They've been hearing the word of God, but they never really heard the the, the, the gospel of the kingdom because these 501c3 corporation Sunday church pastors, preachers, and teachers don't teach the kingdom of heaven. They don't. They don't know what the kingdom of heaven is. They don't even know who Israel is. So that's why they don't teach it. The kingdom of heaven is for Israel. Israel right now is scattered to the four winds. God said he was going to destroy us, Israel, because we sinned against him. That's exactly what he did. He said he was going to scatter us. That's exactly what we did. That's how we ended up here in this country, in the United States, off the Atlantic slave trade. And so this is where we be. We're Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah. That's who we are. The scriptures are our history. It tells us who we are. We don't know who we are because we've been destroyed. But the Lord is waking us up, letting us know. You are Israel. I'm letting you know. You are Israel. So you're hearing the word of the kingdom. The kingdom belongs to you. The kingdom belongs to Israel. So when anyone hear the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then come the wicked one. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, the wicked one, catch away that which is sown in your heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. So if you don't understand what I'm saying, the wicked one is catching away the word from your heart. So you don't understand what I'm saying. It's coming in one ear and out the other. That word is falling by the wayside. Verse 20. But he that receiveth the seed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receiveth it. Receive it. So if you're hearing it for the first time, you're excited. Wow, wow, I never heard this. This is great. I didn't know I was Israel. <laughs> I didn't know I was of the tribe of Judah. Yes, you are. You are Israel. You are of the tribe of Judah. You may be excited about it if this is your first time hearing because your 501c3 corporation, pastor, preachers, and teachers of your Sunday corporation churches didn't tell you that you was Israel. <laughs> so you are excited. You're fired up. You're receiving the word of God with joy. Verse 21. 
yet hath he not root in himself, but doeth for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arise because of the word, by and by, he is offended. <laughs> so you call yourself believing it now since you're hearing it for the first time. But with, the scripture says you don't have enough root <laughs> to endure. You can endure for a while, but soon as some tribulation and persecution arise, you're going to be offended. When they're going to say, you believe that nonsense? <laughs> That Hebrew Israelite stuff. <laughs> God love everybody. He can't save everybody. You believe in that nonsense, that, bad, that Hebrew Israel stuff. <laughs> so you'll be offended when you go try to tell somebody, oh, God, he just love Israel. He just want to save Israel. Israel is God's chosen people. So you got to go through some tribulation and persecution to prove that you are, that you can stand. If you can't stand, you are the one that received the word with joy on stony places, <laughs> but you're offended by and by. Verse 22. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word. Craig and Bellin. Call from. Okay, we got to take a break. Craig and Bellin. Call well, I'm going to let that. <laughs> I'm going to let that and go. Bellin. Now I call him back. Call from. Sorry about that. Uh, Craig and Bellin. So where are we at? Verse Paul twenty, Trump. verse twenty-two. Craig and Bellin. He also said. He also Craig that received Bellin. the seed Paul among Trump. the thorns is he that heareth the Craig word, and, and the Paul cares Trump. of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he become unfruitful. <laughs> I apologize. I should have silenced my phone. So verse 22 is talking about the people that received the word of God among the thorns. He received, they received the, the word and they hear it, the word, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful. So that's what's happening in a lot of these 501c3 corporations and the churches. They'll teach you the word. And they'll talk to you about different things. And a lot of them talk to you about being blessed and all this stuff. And it's deceitfulness of riches. And you think that's what the kingdom of heaven is to be blessed right here and not right now. Like some of the pastors done wrote a book talking about your best life now. If it's your best life now, then you don't need to go to the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> What's the kingdom of heaven for if you already got your best life now? But the kingdom of heaven is for Israel. But what is happening is people are being deceived by the deceitfulness of riches. They want everything now. They want to be blessed now. <laughs> and, you know, having everything, you know, if, if, if God is God, then I should be blessed. I should have stuff. I should be rich. I should look, be looking like I'm blessed and rich. The king, that's not the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> the kingdom of heaven is not in, in, in material things that you can see and touch and feel. That's not what the kingdom of heaven is about. So the people that believe in that the kingdom of heaven is about these earthly possessions, they're deceived. Verse 23, but he that received seed in the good ground is he that heareth the word and understand it, which also bear fruit and bring forth some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty. So that's what the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven is about. It's about bearing fruit. It's about believing the word of God, obeying the word of God. Obeying the word of God and doing what the word of God says to do to bear fruit. And you got to endure until the end. You got to endure hardness as a good soldier. You got to study to show yourself approved unto God. You got to rightly divide the scriptures. You got to study and study the scripture day and night, night and day. You can't just hear it one time and, okay, I got it now. No, that's not going to cut it. <laughs> you got to study the scriptures. Verse 24, another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven 
is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. So Jesus is continuing, continuing talking about the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven is for Israel. Who is he talking to? He's talking to Israel, the seed of Abraham, the tribe of Judah. The kingdom of heaven is for them. So that's why he's talking to them about the kingdom of heaven. He said the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Verse 25. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. <laughs> so Jesus is comparing the kingdom of heaven to a field. He said, like unto a man that sowed good seed in his field. But while he slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. <laughs> so the good seed he sowed. But he has an enemy that came and sowed tares among the wheat. So the enemy is really the enemy of God. So that means God has enemies. And the scripture is going to tell you who those enemies are. Verse 26. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then answered the tear then appeared the tears also so when the uh when the uh, seed was springing up bearing, bringing forth the fruit the tears appeared also with the wheat verse 27 so the servant of the householder came and said unto him sir didst not thou so good seed in thy field from whence then had the tears so there was some, uh, he, he was telling the, the, the master that you had good seed. So why is there tears <laughs> with the good seed? Verse 28, he said unto them, an enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, would thou then that we go and gather them up? So he told told the servant, an enemy has sold these tares. So the servant said, well, do you want us to go and gather up these tares out of the midst of the, the, the wheat? Verse 29. But he said, nay, no, don't do that. At least while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them because it's not harvest time. So he said, no, don't gather them up yet. Because if you gather up the tares, you may also up uh, root up the wheat. And we don't want that to happen yet. Verse 30. He said, let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn. So this is what he told the servant. He told the servant that let, let the uh, tares and the wheat grow together until the harvest. But then he said, and in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, the people that's going to gather them, gather up everything. He said, gather you together first the tares and then bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. So he's making a difference between the tares and the wheat. The tares are not good. They're not good for anything. So they're binding them together in bundles to burn them. But the wheat is what's good. He want to keep the wheat. He said, but gather the wheat into my barn. Verse 31. Another parable he put forth unto them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field. So Jesus always preached the kingdom of heaven. Why did he preach it? Because the kingdom of heaven is for Israel. Who did Jesus preach the kingdom of heaven to? He preached the kingdom of heaven to Israel, Hebrew Israelites, of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Judah. That's who the kingdom of heaven is for. 
That's what he taught. That's what he preached. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a mustard seed. A mustard seed is a very, very small seed, one of the smallest seeds there is. He said, a man took it and sowed it in his field. Verse 22. Which is, which indeed is the least of all seeds. So the mustard seed is least of all seeds. It's, it's, it's so small. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and become a tree so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. So even though it's one of the smallest seeds or it is the least of all the seeds, it's the greatest among herbs. And the birds of the air, when it grows into a tree, the birds of the air come and lodge thereof in the branches of the tree. Verse 33, another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leaven. <laughs> so what Jesus is doing comparing the kingdom of heaven it's very small at the beginning. It's not very big at the beginning. But at the end, it's the best thing in the world. It's the biggest thing in the world. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leaven. So that's how the kingdom of heaven is. But the kingdom of heaven is for Israel. You got to understand who Israel is. Israel is that seed. God has spoke to Abraham about a seed. The seed was Isaac. Isaac had two sons, Esau and Jacob. There was a prophecy that went forth before they were born. It says, two manner of people are in thy womb, talking to Rebekah. The Lord was talking to Rebekah because she was having trouble during the pregnancy, she went to inquire of the Lord. I said, why, why am I having so much trouble in my in pregnancy? And the Lord told her, you got two manner of people in your womb, two nations, two manner of people going to be separated from your womb. One would be stronger than the other, but the older will serve the young. So it's two different types of people. And so they were born, Esau was born, and then Jacob was born. Now, you, this is really what you really need to hear and understand. Esau is a people. His name was also changed to Edom. He is a people. And basically, he is the enemy of Israel. He's the enemy of Jacob. It's pointed out in the scriptures. And you don't hear anybody in the world today mention Esau or Edom as a people. It's like they don't exist. But I'm telling you the truth. They exist. All the people in the scriptures still exist. All these different nations. You may not hear about them, but they do exist. And most of them are enemies of Israel. They're in conspiracy against Israel. You still hear about Israel, <laughs> but the Israel that you hear about is not the Israel of the Bible. The people in the land called the nation of Israel that was established in 1948, they are not the biblical Hebrew Israelites. They're not the biblical Israel. Israel. They're not the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are not Hebrew Israelites. They're not of the tribe of Judah. They are not biblical Jews of the tribe of Judah. They don't have a lick of Hebrew in them at all. <laughs> they're fakes. They're phonies. They stole the land, everything. The scripture says they say they're Jews that are not. They lie, but are the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> but the whole world believes that they are Israel, but they are not. And that's the problem. In your 501c3 corporation, pastors, preachers, and teachers of your Sunday churches will not tell you the truth about who Israel is. So you're ignorant and you don't know because they don't tell you who Israel is. 
Israel is scattered to the four winds everywhere. In Judah, the tribe of Judah, which is called Jews, we are here in America. We came over on the Atlantic slave trade. There's a scripture that says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68, I'm going to send you to Egypt again in ships. Now, who do you think he was talking to and talking about? He was talking to Hebrew Israelites. We are those Hebrew Israelites. We were scattered. The Lord said he was going to destroy us. He destroyed us. When they brought us over in them slave ships, they took everything, our knowledge, our understanding, our history, our language, our names, culture, heritage, everything. Stripped us naked, literally. <laughs> Stripped us of everything. Gave us new names, new identities. They took everything. So we don't even know who we are. But the scripture is telling us who we are. All you got to do is believe it. But I know it's so, it's, it seems so far from the truth that it's hard for a lot of you to just accept that just go back and re-search the scripture re-search the scripture go back and search the scriptures to see if what i'm saying is true we are israel we are of the seed of abraham we're scattered to the four winds we are of the tribe of judah the lord is coming back for israel the kingdom of heaven is for israel Jesus is telling you who the kingdom is for. We started out as a seed, very little, very small. But when the kingdom of heaven comes, it's going to be the best thing ever. Verse 34, all these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable spake he not unto them. Verse 35, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. So Jesus, when he spoke in parables, he was fulfilling scripture. And everything that Jesus did was to fulfill prophecy and fulfill scripture. He said, I didn't come to destroy the law and the prophets. I came to fulfill and that's what he did. And so when he was speaking in parables, he was fulfilling prophecy. So that's why a lot of your 501c3 pastors, preachers, and teachers, they don't understand. So actually, they're fulfilling scriptures, but they don't know that they're fulfilling scriptures. They don't understand. <laughs> He said, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. They still don't understand. So that's why they won't tell you that you're Israel, because they don't know. They don't understand. Verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. <laughs> So his disciples are those that believe in him. They're Hebrew Israelites, seed of Abraham, tribe of Judah. They obey his word and do what his word says to do. Jesus has disciples. He didn't come to start Christianity. He didn't come to start a religion. If we're followers of Jesus, we are his disciples. He didn't come to start Christianity. He didn't come to start a religion. He's not coming back. For Christians, he's only coming back for Israel. So his disciples came unto him saying, declare unto us the parable of the terrors of the field. <laughs> so Jesus had just got through ministering to the multitude. So now he's got to minister to his disciples. Verse 37, he answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man. So he told them that the son of man, that's me. Jesus said, I'm the son of man. He that sowed the good seed. I'm, I'm the one that sowed the good seed. The words that I speak, they're the good seed. Israel, the people of God, God's chosen people are the good seed. If they believe the word of God. 
verse 38. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. So this is twofold. He said the field is the world, the earth. It's the world. Not the people. He just said the, 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 the field, the world. The earth is the world. And it's not a round globe either. I just put that out there to make you go research the scriptures. I know that's what you think it is. He ain't talking about a globe. <laughs> the earth has four corners. It ain't no globe. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. So God has a people, and his people is Israel. He ain't chose nobody else. Everybody else, he ain't chose them. But I think for the most part, he's referring to Israel that don't believe. If you don't believe, even though you are Israel, but yet you don't believe the scriptures, you are counted as tares, the children of the wicked one. Verse 39. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. <laughs> so he said that the enemy that sold the tares is the devil. So you got to remember that Judas, even though he was a disciple, an apostle, uh, that Jesus chose him as one of his disciples, he betrayed Jesus. It fulfilled the scripture, but he was the son of perdition. So he was a tear, basically. So the enemy that sold the tares are uh, the death uh, the soul the, the terror is, is the devil the harvest is the end of the world and the reapers are the angels so he's, he's breaking everything down to us he's telling us who the children of the kingdom are and who the tares are the tares are the children of the wicked one who is the wicked one the devil the children of the kingdom are the children of the son of man, the son of God. The enemy that sold the tares is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. So when when, when he's sending forth the reapers, to their, to the harvest, that's the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. All right? You with me? Verse 40. And therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. <laughs> so the end of the world is coming. That's what you need to understand. That's the bottom line. Everybody want to go around in this world like they got all the time in the world that they're going to be here forever and, you know, they got their careers and jobs and families and all their stuff, making their plans, future plans, having babies and grandkids and all my birthdays and holidays and what I'm going to buy and what I'm going to sell and my business and blah, 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 going on and on and on. The world is going to come to an end. And people are like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> okay. So they are probably the people that are of the devil. That they, don't, they don't care. The enemy that sold them is the devil. Because <laughs> the world is going to come to an end. He said, as therefore the terrors are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of the world. When the end of the world comes, all those that are tares are going to be burned, gathered and burned in the fire. So you better know who you are. <laughs> you better know if you are children of God, a children of the kingdom, <laughs> or you are tear. Because if you are tear, you're going to be burned, gathered, and burned in the fire. That's at the end of the world. And it's coming. It's going to happen. This world has an expiration date. It's going to come to an end. You see everything that's happening in the world today. It's going to get progressively worse. It's not going to get any better. Because it has to. All the scriptures, the prophecies, has, have to come to pass. 
That's what you got to understand. That's why you got to study the scripture to know that. But your 501c3 corporation, pastor, preachers, and teachers on your Sunday church, not going to tell you that. Oh, don't worry about the end of the world. Just live your life. You live your best life now, blah, blah, blah. It's your best life now. You don't have to think about the kingdom of heaven because you ain't going. You got your best life now. So the, the, the tares are gathered and burned in the fire. So shall it be in the end of the world. So who is going to be burned in the fire? The tares. When are they going to be burned? At the end of the world. Who are the tares? They are the children of the wicked one, the devil. <laughs> All right? You know the children of the tares are. You know the children of the kingdom. Jesus. The children of the kingdom belong to Jesus. They're, they're Israel, Hebrew Israelites that obey the word of God. Okay, verse 41. The son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity. So this is where he breaks it down and let you know exactly what he's talking about. He said the son of man himself shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. That means all of Israel that don't obey the gospel that don't obey the word of God, that don't believe that in the kingdom of heaven, don't believe in Jesus, <laughs> don't believe in Israel, <laughs> and them to do it iniquity, that, that Israel, even of the tribe of Judah, <laughs> you just don't believe anything. You want to go around saying you're Christian and <laughs> all this stupid stuff that Jesus coming to save everybody. You're deceived. You do iniquity. Verse 42. And shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. And this is Israel he's talking about. But this is the Israel that don't believe. They're tares. And they're going to be gathered. Cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The kingdom of heaven is for them, but they reject it. They're like, I don't want the kingdom. Okay, you don't want it? Fine. <laughs> Take them and cast them in the furnace of fire. That's where you're going. <laughs> now tell me that your 501c3 corporation, pastor, preachers, and teachers are telling you this on your Sunday morning. <laughs> they're not going to tell you this. But they're going to be cast into the fire lot right along with you. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth, a whole lot of crying. Oh, Lord, too late. It's too late. Everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, is not going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. Verse 43. Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who had ears to hear, let him hear. The kingdom of their father. Who is he talking to? Who is he talking about? He's talking about Israel. Israel is the righteous. The ones that believe. The, the ones that believe. Even believe that they are Israel. I'm trying to tell you that you are Israel. We're scattered to the four winds. Especially Judah. We're here in America. But if you don't want to believe, fine. You don't believe. But you're Judah. So the ones that believe that you are Judah, that we are the tribe of Israel, the, the, the seed of Abraham, we, we are the righteous that shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of our father. Hallelujah. Amen. The scripture says, who that hath ears, let them hear. I hope you have ears. I hope you hear. Because this word is for those that believe. If you don't believe, then it ain't for you. Again, verse 44, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. You see how much Jesus talk about the kingdom of heaven? How much do you hear about the kingdom of heaven in your 501c3 corporation uh, Sunday church by your pastor, preachers, and teachers? How much do you hear about the kingdom of heaven? Not at all. Zip. Zero. Nada. They don't talk about it. 
the kingdom of heaven is for Israel. The which, when a man had found, he hid, and for joy thereof, go and sell all that he had and buy that field. That's how the kingdom of heaven is like tr treasure hid in a field. It's more valuable than all the gold in the world. It's more valuable than that lottery ticket that they keep talking about. <clears throat> but I know all y'all want to win that lottery ticket. The kingdom of heaven is a trillion times more valuable than that lottery ticket. You got to understand, you may win that lottery, but that ain't going to save your soul. You can have all the gold in the world, but gold can't save your soul. <laughs> Money can't save your soul. You can't serve God and money. Oh, no, no. If I win, I'm going to do it. No, no. If you ain't serving the Lord now, how you going to serve him? That is your God, that money. <laughs> All y'all want to win that lottery. The kingdom of heaven is much more, 10 times better than any lottery ticket. Verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly perils verse 46 who when he had found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it that's how valuable the kingdom of heaven is it's more valuable than anything that you can ever want or need or ever think of having verse 47 again the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Verse 48, which when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into the vessel, but cast the bad away. <clears throat> so even though the kingdom of heaven is for Israel, <clears throat> those that believe will make it in, but those that don't make it in, that those that don't believe, they like the bad. They're going to be cast away. Verse 49. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. <laughs> so all you of Israel, Hebrew Israelites, even though some of you don't even believe that you're Hebrew Israelites, <laughs> at the end of the world, the angels is going to come and sever the wicked from the just. Who are the wicked? The wicked are those that don't believe the word of God. They don't obey the word of God. They don't do the word of God. They may be Hebrew Israelites. They probably are Hebrew Israelites. I would even say that they are Hebrew Israelites. But they're wicked. They don't believe. So they're, they, they ain't going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. And then the just are Hebrew Israelites also of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Judah and shall cast verse 50 and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there should be wailing and gnashing of two so he's going to come the angels shall come forth and serve the wicked from among the just so the wicked shall be cast into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth <laughs> the lord ain't playing he's telling you exactly what's going to happen He's not mincing his words. He's not playing around. It's time to stop what they call play church. <laughs> you better get real. You better be right. So if you're not right, if you're wicked, he said the wicked shall be cast into the furnace of fire and there should be wailing and gnashing of teeth. It, it, it's too late to repent then. It's too late to get it right. Verse 51, Jesus said unto them, Have ye understood all these things? They say unto him, Yea, Lord. <laughs> so Jesus is asking you right now, Do you understand all these things? Huh? What you say? Are you sure? <laughs> I guess you said yes. I, I Hopefully you said yes, you understand. But if you understand, you better get the word. You better obey the word of God. Verse 52. Then said he unto them, Therefore, each scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven 
is like unto a man that is a householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So he's telling them that the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder, which bring forth out of his treasure, new and old, whatever is in his house, he's bringing the treasure forth. If they're a scribe, this is what they're instructed to do. Verse 53, and it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed then. So Jesus continued to speak to them of the kingdom of heaven. He said, okay, the kingdom of heaven is brought for you. But you better believe it to receive it. And you better act upon it. And you better obey the word of God. And so after he had finished these parables, the scriptures say he departed. Verse 54. And when he was coming to his own country, he taught them there. He taught them in their synagogue insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence had this man this wisdom? And these mighty works. So he had departed and he came into his own country where he was living, where he was from. And it says he taught them in the synagogue. In so much that they were astonished. And they said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? They're like, we know who this is. It's Jesus, the carpenter's son. He didn't go to no university he didn't go to no theological seminary he don't have a a, a a masters of divinity and all this he's not a bishop a reverend or a pharisee or anything like that where did he get this knowledge and this wisdom verse 55 is not this the carpenter's son is not this his his mother called mary and his brethren, James and Jose and Simon and Judas, we know who this boy is. Who we think he is? <laughs> we come here talking about all this stuff about the kingdom of heaven. <laughs> That's the people that he grew up around. And probably some folks may be thinking the same thing about me. <laughs> what my guy here on this internet doing? Who he think he is? I don't think I'm nobody. I'm just doing what the Bible says to do. <laughs> Verse 56. And his sisters, are they not all with us? When then had this man all these things? <laughs> these are his own people. His relatives, his kinfolk. Verse 57. And they were offended in him because Jesus said unto them, a prophet is not without honor save in his own country and in his own house. So Jesus, he said, well, I understand a prophet is without honor in his own country, in his own house. Y'all know me too well, so I know it's hard for y'all to accept me as, as a prophet because y'all think I'm just that little boy that grew up, y'all saw growing up around here. <laughs> so I know y'all offended in me. Verse 58. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Your unbelief hindered the word of God. It hindered the work of God. So that's why it's important for you to believe the word of God. You can't just, oh, I don't want to hear what this guy had to say. I know him. I grew up with him. <laughs> he can't tell me nothing. <laughs> so that's how people are. The people that you know or they think they know you. They probably won't listen to you because they think they know who you are. But Jesus said a prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. So Jesus was not able to do a lot of works, a lot of miracles, mighty works because of their unbelief. Thank you for listening. Shalom. See you next time.